goes like if I say 1 and 0 1 or 0 1 or 0 is 1 that is true or false basically right so true or false is true if we say false or true is again true only the true uh, false and false comes as the false otherwise the true and true again comes as the true right so these are the things easy one and moreover if you say not of one basically that means of false and not of zero is true okay so these are the things right uh, let's have a very quick uh, assignment kind of thing and let's have some of the questions to see how we go for uh, finding out the like booleans and all comparing things okay so uh, let's have a question like uh, we can say taking inputs from the user and uh, checking the data type same or not okay a very simple program I'm making up there so let's say x is equals to uh, input of something let me zoom in uh, enter someone is there okay. all right mm, okay no one now so enter for let's say a word all right enter word same goes with the y pasting up there so this is y is equals to input enter word right that like now what i have to do is just i have to check whether the two data types are same or not okay so i'm not going to use if because i only need to check whether this are same or not okay so what can i do is i can just simply print that the type of x is equal equals to the type of y and then we can just run this to get the outputs okay so let's run this uh, enter any word let's say it's asia okay and the next word let's say antarctica okay so data types are same having strings over there so obviously the data type will be same now if you change any data type like let's say of an integer so taking 10 and 10 it is false why because first one is the string and the next one as the number right okay now you can compare these things between any of the uh, two numbers any two inputs or many a time we can have questions like compare three numbers okay like take three inputs from the user and then compare it so how can we say like let's say if i'm having x y and z respectively as let's say 5 10 uh, 5 10 and 15 all right my x y and z is something x y z and all now if i want to check that all the numbers are equal whether my x y and z are equal or not right so all numbers i can just write that in that state what should be there that x should be equals to y okay and y should be equals to z and this z should be equals to x only when this all conditions comes true then we can say that all numbers are true uh, or all numbers are equal basically right and uh, for any numbers checking for any numbers what we can do is we can use or basically there right like x here equal equals to y okay, let's give a space here between x equal equals to y and then we can go for or y equal equals to z or z equal equals to x okay so in that case we are not going to go for all the things we can just see whether one condition comes true we will get the answers okay so uh, let's run this first of all uh, let's say this 5 5 and 10 right now okay so all number is right if we just print this now all number and then any number the results are false and true why the second one is true because the y and x value are same so this comes as a true one so that becomes one or uh, zero and then or zero so this is a state so you get the answer one all right i think that is clear very much right 
so these are the things particularly okay now so there is a module name as c math many a times we use this to find uh, like a square root of any numbers or for any uh, solution of any quadratic equation now uh, just have a program here we'll use something can you let me know that what should be taken like if i say that uh, write a python program to find the solution of a quadratic equation if this is a program what should be done okay i'm giving it all right some are coming just Once again, change the layout to the time. And you can have 49 at a time. And this is okay. Yeah, someone is trying to log in. Who is there? No one. Fine. So, solution of this, right? So, let's say if I have an equation ax square plus bx plus c which is equals to zero now if you are, guys if you are having any doubts just speak out right because i'm not taking the chat box okay so if you have doubts you can speak so i'm going to use c math right now complex mathematics all right why the c math because we need to find the solution of any quadratic equation right so if the equation is ax square plus bx plus c in that sense what should should be done there right so let's say for a and for b and for c there must be some values so for taking up the complex number values what i said what function you have to use for taking the complex as the input in one quickly what function should we use before the input Okay, I think you have forgot. So eval is the one. Okay, then you use the input, and then you just write enter uh, a number, enter number a, or enter number basically, right? Uh, let me just just copy up here and let's print for this b and let's print for the c. So this is for B and this is for C, right? So three numbers has been taken, A, B, and C respectively. And now we can find the solutions respectively of that, right? So to find up, once again, So to find out the, let's say, hmm, what to be find out first to find the solutions, I think uh, discriminants, we should for go on for that, right? So discriminant, what is the formula of discriminant? 81, D is equals to? D square minus 4AC. D square minus 4AC. D square minus 4AC. Very good. So this is a, the discriminant value. okay now we have to find out the solutions right so solutions what are the uh, like uh, formulas when you talk for the solutions what do you get minus b under root of something minus b plus minus under root of discriminant by, by 2a right so let's have solution 1 s1 okay so i'm going to say this as minus b of minus b and then minus c math minus b all right so i'm using the square root right because minus b one solution is minus b minus square root of the discriminant right divided by the 2a is it so or anything else one solution is this right the next solution is plus one the same thing but in the plus minus b plus here we are going to just write this plus c math for this right so this is the two solutions and then we are just going to print the solutions are going to be equals to s1 and okay this should be like inside this and we can write them s2 okay 
it should be have. Okay, solutions are S1 and S2. Okay, uh, just let me write A R. So having some mistakes here. It should be one comma and let's run this. So enter the values of A, B, and C. Uh, let's say that if we are writing an equation two, okay, and A is equals to two, B is equals to four, and C is equals to six, then we can say that the solution is minus four this and this basically the things over there. You can see minus four minus one point something, and minus four plus one point something, right? So this is going to be the solution. A x squared plus B x plus C. If you have something like this, right? So these are the things, right? So if we just go to frame this, right? How the equation looks like? I'm just writing it using this. So I will write this as uh, solutions. Okay. So the equation form is basically uh, A B C two four six, right? So two x square plus four x plus and is equals to 0. So this is going to be the equation that is 2x square plus 4x plus 6. Okay, I have mentioned x and all right. So I'm using a right now. Have I given any a, b, z? No? Yeah, okay. Here it is. Uh, okay, uh, let's have r. So r is not defined. All right. Let's now take the x initial. So yeah, the equation form as 2x squared plus 4x plus 6 equals to 0. All right. So you get the solutions. Basically, if this is an equation, you need to find out the results. Uh, you'll learn for those who know simply or like if you have a good hands on libraries. You can just go and solve this. You can you can get the result minus one minus square root of i. What is this i? I complex. You know it comes in the complex iota. That is basically this one, right? You can see j, which is a complex number. So this is the result what we are getting. If I write it here, if I write this here, run this, you get something like this minus two root i minus one, and this is the second result. The two solutions the perfect result you are getting up here this all right so these are the things i think they are fine okay. so let's focus on uh, the different factors now assignment operators and the identity operators so in assignment operators what do we have we do assign something like the first very one is if we say x is equals to five so this is an something where we are assigning the value of five to the x Next, we have something like if we say x is equals to x plus something like x is equals to x plus 4. Uh, okay, one second. x plus 4. So in that case, we uh, have a shortcut for this or you can say we have short term this in case of an assignment operator. Writing it just like x plus equals to 4. Okay, so things comes like x equals to x plus 4 right now when you run this x what what is the output we are going to get anyone quickly the output yeah quick see and tell anything 4 8 15 anything 16 16 14 14 all right, so I have x equals to 5, then I'm adding 4 to this, and it becomes 9 plus 4, and x is equals to 30. All right, fine. So that goes similarly. Like what you have done here is just nothing. x plus 4 is uh, added to this x, and you get 9 here, and in the next line you did 9 plus 4 is equals to 13. That's it. Okay. So these are the things. So same, you have uh, the operators. I'm just writing minus equals to. Okay. Then you have uh, the same what you have in the arithmetic just having equals to sign with that right that is assignment sign basically so you understand the basic difference between the assignment and the comparing things okay so equals and double equals are totally different 
one equals say the first equal say you that this is an uh, equality uh, basically you can say this is an assigning value right assigning operator you are assigning something over there and when you use double operators of equal side then you say it has to be uh, equality checking okay so these are the things right then we have something called as identity operators where we are just uh, using the operators to uh, compare the objects which are in the same memory locations right now when we talk about memory locations uh, I'll let you know how it comes okay identity operators okay cool so identity operators how many are there two is an huh, sorry is not okay so what is this all about right? what is is now is return you the true value if both of the variables are the same object right at the same object something like, like let's say a is equals to a i m l and uh, d l okay and i say b is equals to ampe sci-fi simple all right fine now now do we have the same number of objects in a and b the length if we compare of a b same do the type of a and b is equal equals to same same do the locations say are same or not so id is that function which gives you the location id of x i'm oh, sorry id of a If not, then what are the locations? Oh, why am I doing this? It's A. So false because the locations are different. Right? Okay. That is the thing. So can you say A is B? No. Because the locations are even different. Now if I say C is equals to B dot copy. Basically, the C is a copy of B. All right. So if I look onto the C and B, what you'll find the same things. See, the same things. Okay. Now if I say B is C, C is B, false. Right. Even if the copy it is, if you say ID of C, ID of B. What do you see? The ID are different. Right, IDs are different. Okay, now say, now if I say my A is equals to AI, okay, and I say my B is equals to ML, and my C is equals to DL. Now I'm taking up separately the things. Now I say that D is equals to A. That's it. Right. So what is D? AI. What is A? AI. So do the ID of D and the ID of A are same? Yes. So if the IDs are same, then we can say that D is A. That's true. A is D. It's true. Okay. We have the IDs same because we are having the same contents. All right. Okay. And if we say A is not B. So it's not B, right? Because it's not true. Basically, it's true because A is not the B, right? Those things are there. All right. Okay. So uh, did we have discussed all the printing methods for percent D, percent S, and all? Have we discussed those things? No. 
वन कुकी से आई थिंक आई हैवन गोन थ्रू विद दैट ओके ऑल राइट हाउ मेनी असाइनमेंट्स हैव यू कंप्लीटेड फोर टू राइट ओके that's what i was just thinking okay oh uh, okay in the assignment you might get some questions regarding the system versions and some of the calendar types right so let's see what is a calendar type basically let's have a quick glance of all this so using calendar right it's one of the very interesting module basically you can get a lot of things with that so the very first thing is to understand what are there in the directory of calendar let's bring this calendar first of all and then first print the directory whatever comes inside the calendar so calendar have all these functions that means uh, it is having a uh, function starting from calendar then from c then date at uh, date time then they name different locals errors first week day format format strings and a lot right so from here you can see all the functions that uh, calendar is having up till the week header right and you can go with any of the one so uh, let's see that in the question you might have asked been uh, you ha uh, might have been asked that print the calendar of 2020 now how you are going to print the total calendar of 2020 within the couple of codes and like with the course basically right so we can print the calendar of 2020 30 40 uh, or any year kind of thing right with just lines how we just have to import the calendar we have imported up upwards but still uh, make it here so import calendar and then of which year calendar you want just write it as calendar dot the calendar okay so calendar dot calendar of what Right? Of what means the year? If you are writing the calendar dot calendar of something, so this calendar gives from the calendar module you are bringing the calendar function. So calendar of the month. So oh, sorry, calendar of the year. So let's say that you are asking for two thousand and twenty right now. I'm just just having an example. So you run this and you will get the answers accordingly. Right. so you are getting a slash n there what is that that says that is a new line that is a new line so to avoid that slash n what we are going to do is we are just going to write a print function just before the calendar to avoid that that's it now you see a complete calendar okay Now this is also having a lot of things. A calendar module is having a lot of things. So let's come to the help or the documentation of the calendar. So what you see is a lot of uh, things like classes. And all uh, there are a lot of things basically to go through. If you want to go through, you can go on with all the things. Okay, right. So uh, the formats and all things, a lot of things are there, right? You can go with any one like calendar first weekday, calendar is a leap year, or say any leap year name. Yeah, any leap year. Okay, let's write two thousand one, two thousand two, three, four, and five. Right? So five years are there. Let's say n is equals to this. I'm making this loop for i in the l. Just print me the i, and then print me whether this is a leap year or not. So for that I am just going to use calendar dot is leap of i 
and we are going to get 2001 is not a leap year 2002 is not a leap year 2004 is a leap year okay 2004 is a leap year why because I'm getting the result 2004 is equals to true so 2004 is a leap year now so we, we have come to know that this is a leap year right so now to look on that if it is a leap year then how many leap days are there right okay like if you want to know the number of leap years in the range of like some years right now uh, let's have this for example if i conclude this with 2006 and 7 8 9 and so we got 2004 and 8 obviously for four years we'll be getting up the things right so if i say that calendar dot the leap days 2004 2008 what do you get one second Hmm. four and eight so that gives you particularly the number of leap years in the range of the two years like if you say that from 1900 to 2020 how many leap years has been there 29 okay clear having any doubts mm -hmm. any doubts to anyone I'll have to see the chat box okay fine I, I see no doubts there mm -hmm. no all right fine so if you have any doubts you just ask me right don't go for this all for and uh, all these things right you just focus on the thing that for checking a leap year we are using the function calendar dot is leap when we learn loops we'll see all what are these things okay so calendar dot is leap of i uh, basically calendar i means that all one by one it will come there right 2001 2 3 4 5 and all and for the same things we are getting 2001 is false 2002 is false 3 is false so 2004 becomes true is a leap year 2008 becomes true is a leap year all right so like that even if i write it's like if the calendar copy so if i write that if only if and only if this becomes true then only you are going to print that's it Let's run now you'll only get the leap years four and eight that's it so you take a range of all of the things you say so from range of 1990 to 2021 how many leap years are there so there are 1990 leap days okay right so we have 92 96 4 8 2 6 0 these are the things right you get the things over there one two and you can even count up the things like uh, i is going there right so um, one two three four five six seven eight uh, that's okay we are getting the things right so if we increase this 1900 uh, let's go with this right now so we get at most a lot of things almost 24 right so uh, you get the things over there like this and you, you can print i and all with that right so 1904 and it goes like from 1904 to 2020 so basically 29 leap years between the ranges okay that's fine right next you go like uh, if you want to see a uh, range month range that is returning so weekdays of uh, the first day of month and the number of days in a month like if i say calendar dot that the calendar of a month 
like this. Okay, month calendar. Let's say 2020 and the month is going to be 10th. So it's the calendar of this, basically. Okay, month calendar. So this is a matrix representing you a month of a calendar. Each row represents a week and days outside of the month are represented by zero. So these are the zero, then you have first week, one, two, three, four, second week, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I like this, or you can go with this like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty, and now, right? So easily you can just write it as calendar dot the month of ten. So two thousand twenty ten. And one more thing again, you use print over there to get the things. So October two thousand twenty. See the results 1 to 3, 4, 5 to 11, 12 to 18, 19 to 25, 26 to 31, and outside one again is 0. So, is it cleared? Any doubts again? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So, in the previous one, we did something with the range of all the calendars. Let me uh, shorten this. Make it a com comment kind of thing. Okay. So here you see the things coming there in one side, and we we have left with all these white spaces. Okay. Come So what are the parameters we are having in this case? If we are going to print a calendar of any year. Let's say we are printing the calendar of August 1999. So like it is a month, okay. So 1999, 8, right. So it is the August 1999 calendar, right. So we can go with any of the dates, like if you want to find out the thing. All right. So we come with the year calendar, right? Let's come with the calendar of one second calendar, top the calendar, what we wrote in the first one, right? Next, going up with the parameters. The parameters named as like if I write year. I uh, write the width, what should be the width of the things, right? I should be write the length and all the things, something like this. You just see what are the things, sir, if I write this all, right? So, uh, if I just write for writing up the definitions of this, so help will give you something. So, it, for, it returns your format here, basically, it's a kind of a formatting, right? So, the W, L, C, M and all these things, you'll see what, I, what it is, okay? So, calendar dot the calendar year let's say 1999 okay right uh, w let it be all the things has to be the same that's just copying from here you'll see the difference and what are the things respectively let's run this okay i'll again have to write the print function to uh, write it here and you get this so if i write it as five what do you see if I just increase that, what do you see? The distance or the width you can say has been increased. If I say three, what you can see? The width has been increased. Yes. If I say four, it's increased. Occupying the total uh, space, right? Now length is one, I say it to be two. See, it's going there. And a brief where right? it's looking nice. In at six, I say it to be as ten. See, so it's basically the gap between all the letters and all, basically the days and all. So six was fine. I think five should be better. And the month, the total month in the, uh, or C you can say as the columns and the M as the months you want, right? So one, two, three, four, right now, okay. And uh, if I say four. 
so I have all these things right so there is the January February March and April so all coming overlapping the things right so three is fine so you get the things accordingly and now it is I think it's fine right so going it's well 1999 and this whole calendar of 99 Okay. Now, so if I say a calendar dot any day name, that kind of thing. So that represents you an array that represents all the day of the week in the current local time. Now that comes in the time section, right? Okay. So we'll have to learn the next module as date time. So is it clear how to uh, make a total year calendar or a month calendar? And now you can make it there for any of the year. Let's say if we are going to print the current date and time. So for that what we are going to do is we are just going to print. Uh, let's say if we say uh, Sir. Yes. Sir. Mm -hmm. See. Sir, how can display total days in one? Total days of month. Total days of month. So you just print the month calendar. That's it. You will get all the days there. See. Right. You do one thing, you uh, leave and join again, you'll have a good voice then. If he might be asking something like this, I think calendar. Uh, is your doubt is this weekdays or month, okay. month day, like for 2020 and for the let's say for this the basically what is that for us month right so month and then we write for the 12 so zero what is that today uh, let's say for one three yeah that's fine right so 10 from there is going to be third of the week going from there right? kind of things so you want like the month date you just print basically the month total there to get the dates Right, or every of the day, month name, or the things. There are multiple things, like in the date time module, you will learn the things. Date time, okay. So, like if I say that for the current, if I'm printing date time dot date time dot now, I'm getting 2020, 10, 14, 16, 41, 51, and oh, what are these things, right? So, uh, these are basically first one is of the year, okay. Then you have the month, right? Then you have the date. So today is something for today is 40. Right? So we have two weeks till now in the month of October. Right? Understood. Weekday. Okay. So this is year, this is month, this is date, and this becomes now the hour. This is the second, oh, sorry, minutes these minutes second. second and then the microsecond so these are the complete format of how this date time works on. All, right. so all these things you are going to get now, but when you are going to use print function this changes the now you see 20 20 10 14 16 44 32 point 6 7 6 8 0 2 okay that's the thing all right. Then uh, you have various, uh, you know, like constant terms in date time. When you say a calendar, uh, okay, let's talk about the date time. So, what is the minimum year you should write? That is one. 
at least you should start with one. <laughs> There's no such thing for the zero, right? And what is the maximum year you, you are going to write for these things using for this function? For now, because still now there is no such limits of the year has been taken. That is triple nine, so one zero zero for the date time using the largest year number you can use. Okay, ten thousand. It goes till the ten thousand. Do you, we are just very far till the ten thousand. It's going just two thousand and twenty. So very far it is, right? Okay. Then you have uh, various types of uh, date time. Like if I say date time dot date, so functional is missing, right? So forty. Like if you will have to write it like. Mm, let me first write the definition. Would brief you basically. So date time dot date. What it defines? Local calendar is format is of weekday, week format, and day, month, and all maximum. Date time dot date can be written something like this. Okay, like see guys. Date time dot date. If you are setting a date, so today is first you write the year, right? Then you write the month, and then you write the day. So this is the date. A uh, month must be in one to twelve. Oh sorry, 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 sorry. it's ten. So we have date time of this, right? So we need to print this there, and then the results are easy. This 20, 20, 10, and 14. Now it depends on you in which format we are going to use this. Okay. So date gives you basically the month, the the year, the month, and the day. Right? These are the things. Okay. Now you have TZ, TZ something called as right. That gives you basically the time zones and all. You can go for that. T Y T Z is something called as there. Right. So the time zone of different areas and all the things you will be getting up there. Okay. So these are the things which covers in the uh, date time module. Okay. Like so, if I'm writing a program, the small program that from date time import. Time data. Now, time data used to just count the things, right? Count the things, right? Like for the days, for the seconds, for the microseconds, if you want. Those are the things which are used in the time data, right? The difference between the two dates or the two times or something like that, right? That can be used. All right. So let's write this. So let's say delta is equals to time delta, and now it is going to be a large one. Then making the functions. So the days, let's say 15 seconds. Microseconds. Milliseconds. Minutes. Okay, so only days, seconds, and microseconds remain. If you write all the things inside the time data function, and when you are going to print the delta, what you are going to see? See, delta is something gives you giving you. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I'm getting this from the simply. Okay, this is so delta is the date dot time time delta of 64 days. 29, 156 seconds and 10 microseconds. Okay, so all these things have been converted between the three things that is days, seconds, and microseconds. 
So particularly whenever you write that the things you are only going to calculate between two dates or two times. Okay. So these are the things. So if you are saying that D is equals to a time delta. Okay. A time delta of let's say microseconds. Minus one. Minus one microseconds. Right. So what is the number of days minus one obviously the number of seconds then eight six three nine nine the number of microseconds then triple nine and all these things okay like this so if i change the things here and if i say microsecond is going to be something like a uh, long number of their things you run this. So these are days. These are the number of days. So big days, right? So let's remove some of them. Number of days, zero. This, right? So let's run this, and the number of days is one. So what is this uh, microseconds working up right there, right? So a millisecond can be converted to one thousand microsecond. Okay. So if I write in the time delta, if I write minus one and all those things, you'll get the respective results. So 1000 T days, zero. T D seconds, zero and D microseconds, 1000. Right? Because whatever you write, you'll get the results accordingly. Right? These are the things. So what is the time delta minimum value? That is, days can be this much, minimum. And if we say for the max, we get this, the days, seconds, and the microseconds can be this, as such, for the getting, for getting up the results. Okay. So is this clear with everyone how to work with all these things, right? Okay. Having doubts. All right. So uh, let's have uh, the kind of thing. Let's say if I'm writing D is equals to date time and all. Okay. Uh, date time dot. I'm writing a date, right? So date is let's say 1999, and uh, it's eight, and it's. So then eight ninety nine and D is equals like if we just print this D. So this is ten August nineteen hundred and ninety nine. Okay. Now now if I write D dot str of time and I write uh, some of the string methods like person D, person M and person Y. So this is 10th October 19th. Like formats, there are things, right? If I again use str of time and I say, so this is just uh, converting your string methods to time. So day, month, and year. If writing all these in the capital, day, month, and the year. So you get. 8, 10, 9, 9, 0, 1, 9, 9, 9. All the things respectively. Right. So D and all the things. See? Oh, sorry. Then B would work. Right. So 10th August 1999. If write D, you get the things respectively. Right. Okay. So these are the things. If you write A, so Tuesday, that was 10th is the Tuesday. The so Tuesday was the day of 10th August 99. Or like for the year, if you are working with that, you can write Y, small Y, capital Y, and all such things respectively. Okay. So in this format, you can make it like this or something like this. Okay. Like that. So it works accordingly. Right. So I think that things are clear till now in the date time. 
and if you are ha having any doubts you can ask right now Re regarding assignments if you have doubts so till here i think is clear Calendars are also clear. Yeah.